Welcome and thanks for joining our talk today. We are Anatalia Hogestrat and Alexandra Illiger, and we are student research assistants at the Karl von Osiecki University of Oldenburg. Together with Jörg Hendrik Bach and Sarah Blum from Hörtech and the University, we investigated an automatic detection of human activities from accelerometer sensors integrated in hearables. The motivation for this research is improving of hearing aid performance. With activity tracking, it's possible to have different audio processing for different activities, so the audio processing fits the needs of the user. Recently, meaning the past few years, the field of activity detection through body-worn sensors has been an area of interest for many people. But still, there's not much information about human-worn ear-level devices. For this project, we got research devices, kindly provided by Doppel, which have in real-time access to three-channel accelerometer sensor data. As shown on the slide, the gathering of the data is done by performing an activity, while the data is sent via Bluetooth from the hearable to the computer, and then an activity label is added and a CSV file is produced. Due to Corona, our database is not as extensive as we, as we would like it to be, but for now we have two sets of data, meaning we have two data sets from two individuals performing 12 different activities for five minutes each with a sampling rate of 800 Hertz. On the left, you can see the list of our investigated activities, and on the right, you can see some example data. Our activities include whole body movements, such as walking or jumping, but also more subtle activities like reading or typing. On the right, we brought the graphs of three activities of one of the three accelerometers channels and with the data for about two minutes. You can already see that the Three activities look pretty different on the graphs. Our data processing takes place in three steps. Pre-processing, feature extraction and classification. For pre-processing, we are removing the outliers defined as three times the standard deviation, meaning that the whole sample is removed when there is an outlier detected for one of the three channels. Then we balance between activities, so we have same amount of data for each activity again, and then the data is scaled between 0 and 1 for each activity, so that the highest value becomes 1 and the lowest 0. For feature extraction, we calculate the mean and the standard deviation over a window of 1 second. For classification, we use the Gaussian knife base classifier. The Gaussian Naive Base Classifier can learn a distribution for every feature we extract from our data. In this example here, we have the activity running. And um, uh, so far, we extract the mean value and the standard deviation from our time series data. And during the training procedure, we then learn um, our distribution for the features. And for a new data point, we decide based on the likelihood to which class they now belong. Um, and to do so, the same features are extracted. So again, the mean and the standard deviation, and they are compared to the learned distribution from the step four. And um, as already mentioned, this is done for every feature independently, which is a strong and naive independence assumption on our features. To validate our model, um, we used uh, fivefold cross validation to make sure that every activity appears at least once in um, training and in test data. This is what you can see here in this figure. For every class, we have a certain amount of training data and testing data. Yeah, in uh, particular, we use the so-called stratified keyfold. Um, 
This is a method for time series data. Um, as for every iteration, a block of corresponding features is extracted. Um, in our case, this block may consist of uh, five consecutive means, for example. As a result, um, for our two participants, we achieved an overall accuracy of 67% for the first one and 72% for the second participants. Um, here on this slide, you can see the confusion matrices of both participants um, with the true labels on the y-axis and the predicted ones from our classifier uh, on the x-axis. And every second label has been left out. In both cases, it can be nicely seen that here on the diagonal um, that most predictions are correct and only for talking, which is displayed here, um, the predicted label deviates strongly. Um, yeah, as for the first one, here we have no distinct classification, um, while for the second one, it is most of the time identified here as reading. So far, we achieved good results, and um, there are still a lot of possibilities to improve and to gain even better results in the future. Um, even with that small amount of data we had due to um, COVID, it can be stated that the accelerometer data works for activity detection um, with simple machine learning models, feature extraction and pre-processing. Um, yeah, and to optimize the results even more, we will collect more data to optimize and generalize um, the pre-processing, the feature extraction and the classification. Um, but so far, the overall pipeline is ready. And moreover, we have the advantage that we're using simple machine learning, um, which provides the opportunity to change the activity detection from an offline to an online approach on, for example, um, mobile devices. And in general, the area of possible applications is huge. Um, so not only in hearables, the detection would be a smart gadget to, for example, um, automatically reduce the music level when starting talking to someone. Um, for now, we investigated the activity recognition using these hearables but it can also be easily transferred um, onto hearing aids as well. And um, in hearing devices, this could be a really useful and powerful tool um, to maybe activate different signal processing algorithms um, according to specific activities. This may be when you are jogging, um, you want to have a broad field of acoustic attention as you want to hear a car from behind as well as from the side. Um, when you're cycling, you don't want to have that wind feedback in your ears. Um, and when you start talking to someone, you may maybe want uh, to activate a directed beamformer or stuff like that. Um, yeah, so therefore, this is a really interesting field of uh, research with a really promising future and we are glad that we have the possibility to work on such a project. In that context, we would like to thank our funders to give us the possibilities for our research and we want to thank Doppel for providing us the research devices.